Hi there and welcome to this short video explaining the pre-work that I need you to do before lesson 4. And this video is going to be broken up into four parts. The first part is where to find and upload the work. Part 2 is the structure of the article. Part 3 is the pestle analysis. And part 4 is what I'd like you to do and how I'd like you to do it. So, let's start with part 1. Where to find and upload the work. In your classwork, you will see you have the topics here. You need to click where we see this little icon here. Quarter 1, Consequences of the Industrial Revolution. I've allocated you your groups. Group 1 will read Group 1 article, Group 2 will read Group 2 article, Group 3 will read Group 3 article, and Group 4 will read Group 4 article. This is individual work. Okay, You uh, will upload your work into the Google Classroom as well. Moving on to Part 2, let's talk about the structure of the article. Each group, whether you're Group 1, 2, 3, or 4, has the same introduction. Okay, then you'll have a positive of the Industrial Revolution and then you'll have your pestle analysis table and then you'll have your con, the negative of the Industrial Revolution and then your pestle analysis template. So each group has a different set of advantages and a different set of disadvantages related to the Industrial Revolution. Part three, let's hear and find. <laughs> Part three is what is the pestle analysis. So it's called a pestle analysis because we take the first letters of each of the areas, political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental. So these are all perspectives or points of view which we use when we're looking to analyze a certain situation or a period of time. So in this situation, we are using the pestle analysis to look at the pros and cons of the Industrial Revolution to see to what extent um, was these factors important uh, for the Industrial Revolution. So the political element is looking at government policies during the Industrial Revolution. And you've got to think, did the government policies help support all citizens or just a certain section of society and citizens and certain industries? What do we think was the government's priority based on the information that you have here. You have got to look at the economic factors, so issues like globalization, labor costs, and the cost of living. Social factors, which would include trends like lifestyle choices, was there a good work-life balance, was there career progression, what were the shopping habits of the people at that point in time. Technological, you've got to look at how did the technological innovation at that point in time change society. When you're looking at legal, you're looking at laws. You're looking at, in this context, labor laws, employment laws, uh, environmental laws. You've got to think, did laws exist at that time that protected people and communities, or did they not? And if they existed, then that would clearly be a pro. If they didn't exist, then that would be a negative of the Industrial Revolution. And then when you're looking at the environmental perspective or factor, you're looking at the impact that the Industrial Revolution have on our environment. So the pestle analysis is a way and it's a tool that we use to analyze uh, information, whether it's from an article or whether it's looking at a particular point in time in history type thing. And it's looking at political factors, economic factors, social factors, technological factors, legal factors, and environmental factors, those six factors. And part four, what I would like you to do and how to do it. Well, we're effectively looking at the pros and cons of the Industrial Revolution. So the first thing that I'd like you to do 
is when you're reading this document is to pick a color to highlight and choose one color for the pros and one color for the cons. So I'm going to choose uh, pink for the pros. Okay, so I'm first off, I'm going to read through the pros, the goods become more affordable and more accessible. So I need to look here in this paragraph here. So where do I see advantages? Where do I see the good elements first and foremost? So point one is to highlight the, advanced, the good points of the paragraphs, the benefits. So here it says factories and machines produce items faster and cheaper. So that's clearly a positive because we can get more for less and quicker. Okay. As the supply of various items rose, their cost to the consumer declined. Shoes, clothing, household goods, tools, and other items that enhance people's quality of life became common, more common and less expensive. So items that enhance people's quality of life became more easily available and less expensive. So you use more people can buy it. Okay, you have the creation of foreign markets. That's a good thing, it expands trade. Okay, it brings in tax revenue to the government. So government always likes taxes, right? So they're happy. Okay, however, it also contributed to the wealth inequality between good producing and goods consuming countries. So even though this article headline is the pros is that goods became more affordable and more accessible, there is still a con in here. There's still a negative, okay, that this contributed to the wealth equality, wealth inequality. So I'm going to use uh, orange as my negative color that I'm going to highlight. So these are the good points. Now I need to see where do these points fit in the pestle analysis. So the pros of the revolutions is that factories and machines, they have began to produce items faster and cheaper. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy and paste. And this is going to go into technology. Because factories and machines, that's the technology. It helps things to be made faster and cheaper. Then I'm going to look at, um, it says here that items that enhance people's quality are becoming more common and less expensive. So this, if people's lives are being improved, okay, cost of living, then it can go here. Shopping habits, if things become less expensive, then that helps people as well. So that's a positive that goes here. Okay. It brings in increased revenue for the government. So that goes here. And ooh, foreign markets were created, so that helps with globalization. So I'll put that as a company four, like so. And then what do we do for the wealth? How does it contribute to the wealth inequality? And it's actually um, what contributes to the wealth inequality is that trade shifted in favor of the producer instead of the consumers. Okay, so 
this is a social issue because it's talking about wealth inequality. And it's basically some people are now having far more than others. And it's increasing the wealth gap between those that are rich and those that are poor. Okay? So as we can see from this paragraph, from this section here, okay, we don't have anything about um, political. Okay, there's nothing about government policies to help or anything else like that. Okay, Econ economic, yes, we've got a few points here. Social, we've got a pro and a con. Technological, we've got a um, we've got a pro. Legal, nothing. Environmental, nothing in this paragraph. So it's okay if some are left blank. All right. What you can do, if you wish, you could put in a few questions type thing. So if we know that wealth inequality is happening, okay, um, you could maybe ask, did and do anything to address the wealth? Because it doesn't appear that they have at this point in time. And then you would do the same with your cons. Again, you pick two colors, identify what is the positives for one, and then identify the negatives in another color. And then copy and paste the information where you think it fits best into the pestle analysis. And that's what I'd like you to do, and then submit that onto um, Google Classroom. Thanks for watching. Cheerio and stay safe.